RCMP defending itself in the wake of further criticism from High River residents. One man now accusing the Mounties of entering his home three times before confiscating his weapons, despite his neighborhood not being flooded. Let's get to Alex Gunn in Calgary. Good morning, Alexandra. Good morning, Pat. Great to see you. We are talking about this High River gun grab story yet again. We are getting new details today that relate to an individual whose guns were taken from his home. Now, I want to give you a few details about how this played out during the High River flooding and how the events unfolded. We did know that Greg Vissel's house had two collector guns in it. Now, he was out of town during the time of the flooding. He authorized his neighbor, uh, Lynn Bailey, to to allow the RCMP into his home to do a search. Now, we know that the RCMP went in initially for the search, and then they ended up returning reportedly a second time recording to the neighbor to turn off the lights. Now, what's most interesting about this story is that the neighbor claims that the RCMP never took any guns out of the home during their two visits to his house. So what they're insinuating is that ultimately the RCMP went in a third time to collect those two collector guns. So there's some major concern here by residents about the number of times in which the RCMP entered the home, but also the reason in which the guns were taken. We are hearing that those guns were hidden away in a closet, and now it comes down to the definition of what's being considered as in plain sight. Did the RCMP have the right to take those guns away? We did hear from an RCMP spokesman, Jose Valiquet, who does explain what is allowed and what is considered in plain sight. Watch this. You could be under a bed, in a closet, on top of a, uh, a place where somebody uh, could, hide, could hide. And uh, this is why those firearms were taken inappropriately secured. But I thought they were only seizing guns in plain sight, though. Well, plain sight, if they happen to open a closet uh, to see if someone is there and they see, they see a firearm, of course they would seize it. Okay. It, it, it is in plain sight. It is in plain sight, you know, like upon searching uh, for people, uh, if, they, if they see a firearm that is in a closet, maybe if you stand in the middle of the room, you would say it's not in plain sight. So during that interview, it really brought to light exactly the RCMP's reasoning for going into the various homes at High River, Pat. They spoke with us specifically about that, but we're not just hearing this one incident over the past months. We have been hearing more and more instances of people not being too pleased that the RCMP went in their home to seize their guns. On top of that, we're also hearing now of another resident named Jim Gobb. He's, of course, a High River resident who says that the RCMP kicked in their front door, even though though he put a large X on the front door suggesting that they've already left. So he's saying that the RCMP caused major damage to his home. Watch this. They bust the door. My house was wide open after that. Now they supposedly said they were coming around and patrolling. Well, how often can you patrol? I mean, it only takes five to 30 seconds for somebody to duck in through the garage door and into my house, don't it? Well, if they were confident in their security matters, why were they breaking into houses? So, Pat, there really are more and more questions that are being brought to light this morning in terms of the High River gun grab, what was deemed acceptable. This story definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, thanks, Alexander. You're welcome.